Hey guys, what's up? It's Weezy coming back at you with another video. I just want to let you know this is a budget build tank. I work my ass off, but I don't have a lot of money, you know, to spend. I'm not, I'm not the type of person that spends tons of money except for on my clothes and my cars. But this is a budget build tank. I literally bought the aquarium and the stand for under 200 bucks at PetSmart. It came with a cheap, cheesy lid with an LED light in it, uh, but the lid was a piece of junk. You couldn't even fit a measuring cup into the uh, hole on top that they give you to feed through. So I've taken that off. Um, I am looking desperately for a glass top to go on there. I've ordered two of them now off Amazon. And both of them have came shattered in a million pieces because the company that keeps mailing to me, which is not Amazon, it's another company that sells through Amazon, is not packing them properly, so they're just loose in the box. But anyway, back back to the budget. Uh, sorry, the budget build. Um, the sand and the rock is from a previous tank I had set up years ago. I had a big 80-gallon tank. I never had luck with it. I spent tons and tons of money on it between the sump and the tank and the stand and the rocks and the sand and pumps and skimmers and overflows and all that stuff and it just it never thrived. This tank actually thrives and it's like I said it's a budget tank. So this, the stand and the, the tank itself I paid around 200 bucks from from PetSmart. Um, the, the rock and the sand were sitting in buckets for probably the last eight years. So they were dead. But I took them out of the buckets. I took all the rock and I put it in buckets of bleach water. And I let it soak with lids on it for about 14 days. Get all the parasites and any other hitchhikers or anything that may have been still on the rocks off. I washed it really good put it on the uh, driveway and let it dry out for about six seven eight hours and then of course I put it in this tank the sand is also from that old tank it was also sitting in buckets for the same amount of years um, I just took it outside and I rinsed it until the water was white um, I put it all in this aquarium and then I dosed it with live bacteria and within a week, it was it was all live. I had fish in this tank within a week, and I haven't lost a single one except for a suicide jumper that jumped out while I was at work. Um, besides that, I do have the two white wave makers in the back. I bought those off Amazon. I paid twenty dollars a piece for them. They're seven hundred gallons per hour. And then I have that little black one, which is 510 gallons an hour. I also bought that off Amazon. I paid, I think it was $20 for that as well because they were out of the white ones. So I had to go with a different brand, a little bit smaller one. Um, the heater on the back I bought off Amazon. I paid $30 for it, and it's an Acra Temperature uh, heater. So it actually is constantly... Uh, heating the water so the water always stays at a constant 77 degrees um, if it ever does drop below that the heater kicks on at a higher power to heat the water back up to where it's supposed to be but other than that the light on it is always green it always reads 77 degrees for the water the top reading is the water temperature and the bottom reading is what the heater is set at and as long as that light is green that means it's keeping a constant temperature if it turns red then the temperature is dropped and that the heater kicks on at full power to get it heated back up but since I put it in here the light was red for probably two or three hours and it's been green ever since and it's always staying exactly at 77 degrees so it's it's doing its job it's doing really well um i also have the night crew led light this is the night crew led marine lamp or reef lamp i can't remember exactly what it was called but it's a 30 to 36 inch light 
Um, it does come with a dual channel timer. The timer is right there. You set the time for the blue lights to come on and off. You can also set the time for the white lights to come on and off. So I have them cycling and they slowly fade on and off within 15 minutes after they're supposed to come on or go off. So it kind of simulates the effect that the uh, sun is rising or the moon sun setting, whichever you want to call it. So it, it does a really good job. It's not exactly a 24 seven timer like some lights have, but for $53, it's not bad. Uh, that right there is my wave maker. I bought that off eBay, or, yeah, off eBay, because on Amazon they wanted 70 or $80 for it. And it's not one of those high-tech ones, you know, then change the, the flow of the pumps or anything like that. It just switches between the two pumps. Um, so right now it's set for every 15 seconds. It'll switch back and forth between those two white pumps that are on the side of the tank. So like right now, the right pump is, or the left pump is running. And here, right there, the uh, right pump is running. So it just switches back between the two. Um, if I want to, I can set them so they both come on at the same time and it'll run in the 15 increments or five second increments or one minute, hour, two hours, three hours, whatever I want on it. Um, it's also got a setting on it so that every day at exactly noon, it shuts off for an hour because it knows it's feeding time. So it'll shut the wave makers off to lessen the current in the water so I can feed the fish without wasting a lot of the, the food which is a really nice feature that has. And like I said, I paid, I think it was $30, $35 for that off eBay. Uh, this is my Fluo 207 pump that's or filter. That's all that's running this aquarium. Um, it normally sells for 140 at Petco, but if you buy online, they actually give you 20% off that price. So I paid under $100 for this Fluo 207 filter. And it does, I think, a way better job than the $300 sump that I had bought for my bigger tank, which is now just sitting in storage somewhere with that big tank. But I clean it out once a month. Um, I rinse all the uh, the filler media in the water that's inside the filter. I dump it in a bucket and rinse it all out and wring it all out, and then I put it all back in there and I fill it up with fresh water and dump the nasty stuff down the, the toilet. Um, I do have a cheap power strip I paid eight dollars for from Walmart. I know everybody's gonna say oh my gosh it's not GFI protected but I do have the plug on the wall I changed out with a GFI so everything in here is GFI protected just in case Mr. Fluval springs a leak which I hope it never does. I haven't had any problems with it yet but so far so good. Uh, down here I just have a bucket with like my measuring cups in and my bulb feeders for my corals and stuff like that. This is the bucket I use to actually clean the filters out so I'll dump all the water out of this fluval into here and I'll use this bucket to rinse all the, the mediates inside the canister filter and then like I said I dump it out and put in fresh water. This side is just all my chemicals and test kits and extra sand or salt and some food and my nutrients for my corals, algicide, ick in case I ever get it. Um, this is what I started the aquarium with. It's Biological Booster. Bought it at Petco. I think I paid $10 for it and it's probably just as good as any of the expensive brands that I've ever bought. Um, other than that, I do have this Red Sea Prism 75 skimmer, protein skimmer. It was on my 80 gallon tank. I just cleaned it up really good and I put it on this tank and it seems to be doing really good at, at taking the gunk out of the water. You can see it's got the dry foam there at the top instead of wasting the sea water like most people do when they turn theirs up too high and then I did do an upgrade on the fluval I put on a surface skimmer for the intake um, it's pretty cool it actually 
service skims the water so you, all that grease and oil and film and stuff that's on top of the water goes down there it gets sucked into the filter and then it does suck in water from the bottom as well and then it goes to that tube it goes back to the filter so instead of having just the long tube in there that usually comes with the filter I upgraded it with the surface skimmer on there and then the pulsing Xenia I bought yesterday it was supposed to been ten dollars I got it for five dollars I don't know why but the guy at the pet stores gave me a better deal and then I got that coral I have no idea what it is but it has little green polyps on the top of it you can barely see them but it looks really cool when it's underneath just the blue light I also got that for five dollars yesterday it was supposed to be 10 but like I said he gave me both of them for ten dollars I also do not know what that coral is um, him that's a uh, Zoet. Zo I can't remember how to say it. But he looks really cool underneath the, the blue light as well. He turns like a orange sparkly color and green park sparkly color. That's probably the most expensive one I bought. I paid 20 bucks for that one little polyp. $20 for one polyp. But hopefully it grows fast and it spreads and it'll be worth that $20. Um, I have... The green mushroom, which is doing really well in here. I think I paid $20 for that as well, but it came with the rock. I have, they call this a toxic green torch coral. I don't know if that's the right name for it or not, because when I look online underneath that name, it brings up things that don't even look like this. So I don't even know if that pet store had the name of it correct. But I paid ten dollars for him. He's doing really well as well. I'm just hoping he spreads and gets a little bit bigger. And then I have my anemone, of course. I bought from Petco. I think I paid thirty-five dollars for it. He's a little closed up right now because the clownfish were messing with him. They're still trying to get used to him. This is Vinny. He goes over and see, like right now, he kind of brushes by him. Earlier, he was swatting him with his tail and different things that I think he's still trying to figure out exactly what he is but yeah um, that's my dotty back he likes to hide a lot and swim through little crevices in the rocks and things like that but he's starting to come out in the open a lot more than what he did when I first got him um, I said that's Vinny this one up here is Sparky. He was my very first fish that I put in this tank. I put him in six days after I put this tank up. And he's been in here for about three months now. This tank is... Well, this tank's probably three or four months old. And Like I said, he's been in here since the fifth or sixth day that I set it up. Oh, I also have this coral. Um, it was just a straight stick when I bought it. And within a month, he's growing that little nub there on the left. And it's actually growing pretty quickly. Normally, he's got little black tentacles that hang out all over him. But for some reason today, he's not coming out to play. And I don't know why. But like I said, I also do not know what that coral's name is neither. If you guys have any idea what these corals are, please comment and let me know. Because I haven't a clue. Um, other than that. Just the Narzo snails. You can see his little snorkel sticking up right there. And there's one right there. That's his little snorkel sticking up as well. Um, Vinny's being a camera hog right now. I think he's trying to be YouTube famous. But yeah, that's him. And then other than that, I do have two blue-green chromos. All the fish in here get along really well. I haven't had any problem with any of them. I did have a striped blenny, which was a really, really cool fish. I love that fish. He was in here for about two weeks. And when I came home, he was missing. I couldn't find him anywhere. And then later that night, I found him underneath the tank stand. So apparently he jumped out while I was at work and committed suicide. And I haven't got another one yet because I want to wait until I get a top on this tank. There are a few more fish I want to get, but they're jumpers, so I need to get a top. But like I said, I'm having a really hard time getting a top. I ordered two of them from a place called My Goods. 
that sells on Amazon and both of them came shattered in a million pieces because they do not pack their merchandise. I even asked them on the second order to please make sure it was packed properly because the first one got broken and I waited three or four weeks for it and I said the second one came just two or three days ago and it was completely shattered as well so I had to send it back. I did find another one that's in New York from a pet store in New York. Of course it was $30 more than what I'd paid from or the one that was from my goods. But I guess as long as they pack it properly and it comes in one piece, it'll be worth the extra $30 because I'm not going to waste the time and the money going back to that place on Amazon again. It's not Amazon's fault. It has nothing to do with Amazon. They just sell on Amazon and it's a completely separate store that ships them. I've never had a problem with anything that Amazon has sent me. Everything's always arrived. Like I said, most of the stuff in this aquarium came from Amazon. The only thing that did not come from Amazon was the tank itself and the stand and the fluval filter, the heat or the and the uh, protein skimmer. And of course the rock and the sand. Other than that, all the rest of the equipment on this tank did come from Amazon. It was a very budget build. And I'm always adding new stuff to this tank. I'm struggling with a little bit of algae right now, but my snails and my hermit crabs are not quite doing what they're supposed to be doing. So I treat it with some algicide. It works really good. It takes a couple of days for it to die off. It'll stay died off. And then hopefully I can get the coralline algae to start growing and covering thing, everything up so this algae will not come back anymore. And then there is a sand sifting starfish, but he's always hid underneath the sand when the lights come out. And of course there's Dottie back there hiding in his little cave. But yeah, that's my budget build. I think I've shown you everything and the cost of what I paid for different things. And like I said, I did have a big 80 gallon tank. I paid over $100 or $300 for the tank itself, and I paid another $300 for the stand, I paid three, three fifty dollars for the sump, and another 100 for the uh, return pump in it, and you know, two or $300 for the light and everything. I, I spent thousands of dollars on that tank, and it just, it never thrived. It, it was just, it was a mess. The first five or six fish I put in there, which were green chromos and the cardinal fish, which are supposed to be really easy to take care of and good first fish, none of them lived past two days. They all just up and croaked. But this tank, my budget build that I've spent probably about a thousand dollars on is thriving and doing really, really good. Um, I am going to add some more corals. It's just hard right now here in Utah to get saltwater fish and to get corals because a lot of the saltwater stores closed up due to the pandemic. So I don't have a lot of choices on things right now. We do have some really cool stores here in Salt Lake. One is OCD Reef. Shout out to OCD Reef. I love that store. Those are the guys that gave me these two corals for $10. And have helped me out quite a bit with questions and different things like that. And they have a really good selection of things. Um, but like I said, most of the saltwater fish stores or stores that had saltwater no longer had them. Because during the pandemic, I guess the distributors raised the prices of everything three times of what they normally were. So like a sand sifting goby that's normally a $20, $30 fish. They were having to pay over $100 for that fish, so then reselling it, it was coming out to $140, $150 for a normally $30 fish. So hopefully now with things back to normal here in Utah and mostly around the country, I start getting some more cool fish. I want to get another spotted blenny, hopefully, as soon as I get a lid for this tank. Um, 
I did want to get a tang fish, but this tank's a little small for a tang. So maybe I'll go with the coral beauty, but you know, the angel fish, they kind of have a tendency of nipping at corals and I eventually want to have a lot of corals on these rocks. That's why I've arranged them with a lot of flat spots so I can kind of spread them out. Um, I still need to take the uh, frag, uh, I can't remember what they're called, the frag plugs off these corals so I can glue them to the rocks. I haven't done that yet. I just wanted to get them in the tank and get them acclimated yesterday. So... Hopefully here in the near future, I can get those plugs off and get them glued down to the rocks so they're a little more secure and don't look so obviously out of place. But other than that, yeah, this tank does great. Thanks for watching.